your mocks are tomorrow well not really but that could be the case if you leave your revision to the last minute so here's everything you need to do and more importantly what you should avoid with your revision get all eights and nines this winter now let me quickly answer a question which i don't even know why exists should i revise for my mocks of course you should because these results are going to be your predicted grades and are most probably going to be the ones you use for your sixth form application and on top of that a great taste for the actual GCSEs because after you get your mock results you'll know whether your revision methods worked or not on the other hand if you choose not to revise you'll waste a whole lot of time January onwards because you won't even know what your true weak subjects are so trust me revise for these mocks so you've made your mind that you're going to revise right but before you do that let me tell you what you should avoid to make your revision as effective as possible reading the textbook highlighting and just copying notes are all examples of passive revision techniques because you think you're learning the information but it's never going to stick in your head to improve on this try implementing active revision techniques like active recall into your revision so let's say as an example that you wanted to take notes instead of just copying the notes from the textbook try understand that topic for example by watching a video then try to learn as many key points as possible once you've done this close the textbook write down everything that you remember so then if you missed any of these points you can go over just those points and then you know the information is truly started to stick in your head now because mocks are not that far away i'm not going to tell you to implement space repetition into your revision for the actual exams in may and june i am going to try and fit that into my revision and it's basically where you just go over the same topic in space intervals like every three to four days and anki is pretty useful for that Finally, so that's out of the way, here's some key tips for some of the subjects that you might be taking for your GCSEs. So many of us find English hard, but in reality, we can make it quite simple to get the top marks in the subject by following some key points. Practicing essays is the only way that you're going to improve in a subject, and it's hard, but it's also the reality. And don't tell me you're going to go into the exam without knowing the key quotes for each of the plays, because that is also one of the most important parts of your revision for English literature. But one of the main reasons why so many of us as English students don't get that grade 9 is because we use simple analysis for each point that we make and getting a thousands of these will only make the examiners more bored so they'll just give you an average mark which you don't want try to look for the deeper meaning and be creative with each line of analysis that you do because chances are only you'll have come up with that for english language it's important that you know about complex words and phrases as well as good sentence starters for your descriptive writing or stories so i'll leave a link in the description to the best words you need to know for english language so if you tried everything for English, but you're still not getting the results that you want, then it's time to try today's sponsor, First Rate Tutors. First Rate Tutors is the ultimate AQA English language and literature course for students like you who are looking to get two grade nines in your English GCSEs. The course contains over 200 lessons worth 100 hours of teaching designed for teaching you part of the courses that you want to revise. For example, I'm able to revise A Christmas Carol, Macbeth, and Power in Conflict Poetry as part of my GCSE course. The course also contains over a hundred model answers, so then you can practice your essays with similar top tier structure that'll get you closer to the grade nine. This is all taught by English Tutor. You can get lifetime access to this on multiple devices, all just for $59.99. Link will be in the description. Moving on to maths, the good thing for maths this year is that we won't have to learn any equations as part of our GCSEs according to exam boards, that's going to save you a lot of time as well. Maths is basically just practice to be honest and if you don't understand the topic at first just try watching a YouTube tutorial for example via Corbett Maths, Maths Genie and GCSE Maths Tutor. Another one of the reasons why I've been able to do so well in my recent maths tests is because our school gives us these booklets that we work through for each topic which has got like work examples and in your turn as well and then it's got other fluency practice questions for us to do and to be honest for my last few tests this is all i've been using for my revision and it's worked really well so that's pretty cool for me so i like to split up my science revision into three main elements and that is understanding the concept memorizing the key points and practicing exam questions. For the understanding part of the revision, I like to use cognitoedu.org. It's basically like the ultimate revision website for science because it's got videos for each topics for physics, biology, and chemistry. That's followed up by questions on that topic. And it's also got customizable quizzes that you can make for yourself. And of course, it wouldn't be a website without having past papers and past paper questions for each topic. For the memorization part of my science revision, I mainly use CGP, which most of you know. And I also have, I think, pre made flashcards for physics because it's good to have an extra resource and they're basically high quality flashcards that I found online for free so that's really good to have. I take French for GCSEs and for GCSE languages there's basically just two parts so you need to know to do well in the writing exam. That's having a solid foundation in your knowledge of the tenses and also knowing the relevant vocabulary for each module which Quizlet has a really good amount of flashcards for that are high quality. I do recommend them for you and to add that cherry on top I would also recommend that you learn some high level phrases it doesn't even matter if you check them from Google Translate because this can be used to surprise your examiner and that gets you one step closer to that grade nine. 
I've made a full video on GCC French, so do check that out. For other subjects like geography, RS, and computer science, there's lots of theory as part of that course. So it's really important that you give yourself lots of revision time to memorize the key points that you need to know. For example, the facts and case studies for geography. So you know how to revise and you know the tips of each subject. But before you go, here's some really juicy tricks that you can use for the actual exam. So if you're revising English, then it's really important that you know what the examiner wants to see. Luckily for you, I've got the effort in and researching that these examiners use model answers as reference when marking your exam. These model answers aren't just the top tier grade nine ones, but they're also the lower end grade fours and below. Go online and look at these model answers and see what's the difference between your answer and the top tier model answers, because most probably it will be the way they analyze and the structure they use and try to implement that into your own essay so you can get that grade nine. Also, I've noticed that whenever I do an exam, I always have that stress in my mind that I want to complete the questions as quickly as possible. So to avoid this, just take a deep breath and try to give yourself time to think before each answer because most probably you'll get a higher quality answer for your exam question leading to higher marks. That's basically everything you need to know your GCSE mocks. Obviously, some of you will be doing the November resets, so you'll have it much more earlier than me because I've got them in December and some of you are just naturally doing your mocks in November. So good luck for GCSE mocks, follow these tips and if you watched all the way, then please subscribe because I really want 5K by the end of the year and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.